Lashana Tova, guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and Lashana Tova means Happy New Year in Hebrew. It is time for the Jewish High Holidays, and that typically means something that's off to a nice sweet start. So that means we're gonna cook something that's nice and sweet today. Now, I'm not really what you'd call a religious Jewish guy. I'm just, my, my Judaism to me is about the traditions and, of course, about the food. A little backstory on what Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are, which comprise the Jewish High Holidays. Um, they're about a week and a half or so apart from each other and Rosh Hashanah is the day that God supposedly writes everything down in his or her book about what happens to each person and then on Yom Kippur is when he or she seals that book. So you're basically supposed to be really good in those 10 days, really sweet to each other, do good deeds or mitzvahs, although you really should do those things every day of the year. They shouldn't just be in that time. So that's what the holidays are really about in a nutshell. A lot of the time during the new year, Jewish folks like to eat sweet things to signify a sweet start to the new year. That can mean apples and honey or these amazing things we're about to make. They're called blintz souffle. And what that is, it's going to be basically some blintzes with this amazing souffle sauce of eggs and sour cream and cream cheese and sugar and vanilla. I mean, need I go on? It's going to be amazing. And right in the instant part, you're going to see how crazy, ridiculously easy it is to make. Oh, it's hot to shenu bubala. So guys, let's have a wonderful, sweet beginning together. You don't have to be Jewish to enjoy this. Food knows no religion. It's just all about delicious foods from all different cultures and backgrounds. So I'm proud to present a blin souffle that is going to make your day. Let's go. So using a stand mixer or a hand mixer, I'm going to use my stand mixer because I paid a lot of money for it, so I'm going to use it. I'm going to add in 16 ounces, a 16 ounce container of sour cream. I'm going to crack in six large eggs. A whole cup of granulated white sugar. A teaspoon of vanilla extract and a tablespoon of orange juice, which is gonna bring out some more flavor, believe it or not. I'm gonna use the whisk or beater attachment. I'm going to lower it inside the um, stand mixer, and now I'm going to start it on stir, and then let everything get melded together slightly, and then work our way up to number the number two setting. Right? So we get nice and mixed up. And then kick it up a notch to number four. All right, we should be all nice and smooth now. Yup, that looks just perfect. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to take our stackable pans. So remember those Ecovana stackable pans or the Tiddly's ones? There's a few different kinds that are all the same thing and I'm gonna link them into the recipe um, to show you where you can get them. If you already have them from making the lasagna rolls or from the pineapple upside down cake, we're gonna be using them here too to make these blend souffles. They're gonna be amazing and they're perfect and we're not gonna have to turn our oven on in our house. It's gonna be amazing, I love that. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. Now using some butter, I'm gonna grease each of our pans on the bottoms and on the sides. And we should look like this on both pans when all said and done, bottoms and sides well greased. Now let's take our mixture and just pour a little bit of it into the bottom of each pan so it forms the bottom layer that we're gonna set our blintzes on top of. And then shake it around a little bit so the bottom gets covered. You can just spill it around just like so. Just a little layer we have there so our blintzes are gonna be resting on top of them. Perfect. Now let's get to the blintzes. Now I like to use cherry and blueberry filled blintzes for this. You can also use the cheese one as well. Don't use potato. We want it to be a sweet blintz, not a savory one for this, obviously. This is like a very delicious, like eggy, sour, creamy, sugary coating souffle thing we have gonna go on in there. So let's layer each one into each pan. And we want them still frozen right out of the freezer and we want it seam side down and just layer them within each pan. Perfect. Leave a little bit of a gap if possible, and we're done with our blueberry blintzes, and now let's add our cherry blintzes into the next pan. And... perfect. Just like that, there's our cherry, there's our blueberry, and now we're gonna pour the rest of our delicious filling right on top of these beauties. There we go. Let's distribute it equally. Get all the little crevices in there. Go. They should really be all nice and filled and to the top and all said and done in terms of all the blintzes being covered. We don't want the entire pan covered because it'll rise a little too much, but this is going to be perfect the way that it is, just like that, until we can't really see the tops anymore. Phenomenal! All right, now let's get it together to cook it up. Now with the caddy over here, let's set the first pan down right on the center of it, and then cover with the other one that sits right on top just like so, and then cover this one with the top lid. And now we're going to close up our caddy. Voila, the 
just like that. And now we're gonna put it in the instant. So the instant pot, I'm gonna add a cup and a half of water with the trivet in the pot and the handles folded downwards, not hanging up. And now let's carefully lower our stackable pans inside the instant pot. Let's make sure these two little loops up here are closer to the front of the pot and that these lines here on the caddy are facing toward the back. That's how the lid's gonna close easily. And now let's close our lid. Perfect, make sure we're in sealing position. I'm using the duo again, and I'm going to hit manual on this, and I'm gonna go up for an hour, 60 minutes, guys. 60 minutes, perfect. And while our blend souffle is cooking up in the Instant Pot, let's take four ounces or a half a brick of cream cheese and set it out at room temperature so it comes down from a super chilled temperature to a more room temperature one. Now that it's all done, we're gonna finish with a quick release. Pin dropped, so the lid comes off. There we go. And now using a dish towel, carefully remove our stackable pots from the Instant Pot and set it out to rest for a moment. And now let's unlatch and open and we're gonna see how beautiful that is. Look at that. Okay, we're gonna let that cool and now let's take the top one off and we're gonna have our bottom one. And there we go, we have one and then the other, and we're gonna leave them just like that for about 15 minutes to cool in the pan. Don't worry if the top of this looks a little bit more, you know, distorted than the other one. We're gonna flip them anyway, like the pineapple upside down cake, and you're gonna see what we're gonna do. And if the top looks like it might be a little bit of liquid from the moisture of the pan, just do a little bit of a dab with a paper towel. It'll sop it up very simply. In the meantime, while these cool for about 15 minutes, we're gonna make our cream cheese glaze. To make our cream cheese glaze, we're gonna go back to our stand mixer. This time I'm gonna put the paddle attachment on top. I'm gonna start with that now softened cream cheese. And I'm going to now wanna cream this and just beat it real good in there. Right. Once it's really smooth and creamy like that, we're done with that. Now we're gonna add in a half a cup of confectioner sugar, which is the same thing as powdered sugar. One teaspoon of vanilla extract and a quarter cup of milk. Let's lower that in there and let's put it on a slow setting first and stir because that powdered sugar can go everywhere. And now that it's mixed in a little bit, we're gonna increase the speed and blend it up until it becomes creamy, like a glaze. So it's at the number four speed and we're gonna really want it to beat together in there until it becomes nice and smooth, about one to two minutes. And now you can see after about two minutes or so on the four speed, it's nice and smooth and beaten and we have a delightful cream cheese glaze. Now I'm gonna put this in a piping bag. And these little triangular bag things that kind of look like the things that a grand opening thing, except they usually have, you know, different colors. Yeah, anyway, we're gonna put one of those inside of like a glass and it's gonna be easier to open it this way and to pour in our mixture. It's also a lot easier to do it with two hands but you're not holding a camera. So I'm gonna now pour our delicious cream cheese frosting right into our piping bag. And then scrape out the bottom and spoon in every last drop. And now let's just let this sit here for a second while we go back to our delicious blend souffle. And we're gonna take a plate, and isn't that fitting, even though we're a holiday ahead of that, actually. And it's a little larger than the actual diameter of the plate itself, and we're going to flip it upside down, just like so. There it goes, it's gonna come off nice and easy now. Perfect, lay that there and get the next one. And there you have it guys, our beautiful blend souffles, plated, it pops right out of the stackable pans, and as if they weren't sweet enough, or that cream cheese glaze is gonna be as sweet enough, I'm telling you, it's the sweetest part of the year for us Jewish folk. We're gonna top it off with some amazing blueberry and cherry Comstock, which is an amazing pie filling. Yeah, I, I told you, we want it to be nice and sweet. So I'm gonna take a spatula, and I'm gonna take some of this deliciousness and I'm gonna layer it right on top of our souffle. I know, right? <laughs> and there we go, looking great on our blueberry side. And now let's get the cherry side. All right, a cherry for me, a cherry for you. Mmm, look at that. It's like something out of a storybook, am I right? Look at that, blueberry. Cherry, I, I can't. And now it's time to finish it off with our cream cheese glaze. I'm gonna lance a little hole down here and I'm gonna squirt it on top of each. Okay, I just snipped a little hole and now I'm just going to drizzle it over back and forth. Mm. And ta-da! Doesn't that look lovely? Now that is a Blintz souffle. I mean, if that isn't the start to a sweet year, you tell me what is. I mean, look at how beautiful this is. Right, let's serve it up. I don't even know which one I want. Which one should I... Uh, Alright, I'm gonna do it with the cherry. I'm gonna go with the cherry. I'm just gonna cut this like a cake. It's not even gonna matter where the Blintz are at this point, because the whole thing just becomes you know, this melding thing of 
goodiness and happiness and sweetness and look it comes out pretty much just like a piece of cake would and I'm gonna just put this right on my plate look at that and the cherries inside the cherries on top you know what fine a piece of the blueberry too. twist my arm Blueberry Blint's heaven! Oh boy, let's put this right next to its cherry brother or sister or whatever. <laughs> this is too pretty, I'm almost like feeling bad that I have to go into it right now, but I'm gonna anyway. And the rabbi in the corner said, Jeff, I'm gonna warn you, it'll turn into a souffle, Blint's. Alright, let's just try the blueberry now. This is, seriously, one of the most decadent, most unbelievable ways to not only break a fast on Yom Kippur, but to really say life is sweet, life is good, life is delicious. Mm. And there's just a little bit of sugar in there to make it sweet. But, uh, you know, guys, this is what it's all about. It's about something that's really delicious. People love to have dairy on the breakfast, and... Um, uh, people, you know, this is to me a dessert, but people like to eat this as a side. I've really done it over the top. It's not typically this over the top with, with the pie filling and the cream cheese glaze, but I, you know what? If you haven't eaten all day, I mean, you can do whatever you want, right? Oh wow, this is delicious. It's outrageous. It's just like this amazing fruity cake, spongy, happy thing. I can't describe it other than the fact that it just tastes unreal. You guys are gonna love it. What a delicious, beautiful, sweet treat to ring in the new year. Oh man, I'm gonna have to give Richard some of this. Guys, if you enjoy these recipes, if you like these easy to follow video recipes, go to PressureLoveCooking.com. I'm not meaning to point my fork at you like this, but I guess it, it gets the point across. Um, and I have tons of videos there, tons of recipes. Every single recipe has a video component to follow, super easy. And um, if you like all the content, go to Facebook.com slash PressureLoveCooking. I do a video once a week, that's live. I do a funny memes, I do funny pictures, I do tips, I give you guys all that you need to know about the Instant Pot and any cooking tips you want. Uh, Pinterest, pin any recipe I have on HerschelaCooking.com to any board. And thank you so much again, Le Shana Tova. A blint souffle makes everything okay.